Hey guys, this is Mike with Ruling Note Music. So, just this last weekend, I worked sound at a couple of live shows. And one of these shows, the 25th anniversary celebration of local Sacramento area band Rogue, I was tasked with recording. The board that was used for this show was the Midas M32, which has been out for quite some time now. However, I did something this time that I had never done before, which was multi-track record the entire four-hour show without needing to haul out a computer-based recording setup. I recorded four hours of music on 32 tracks straight to SD cards. And the format of these files can be a little confusing for most people at first. So in this video, I'm going to go over the process of separating these multi-channel files to be used for mixing in Studio One. But first, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos like this, and let's get to it. Okay, so we're starting here back at the computer with two SD cards that I brought from that show. The first thing that we're going to do is start with copying the SD cards over to the computer. You don't want to reference them from the SD cards themselves because they have to be converted from multi-channel WAV files into separated mono files for each track. So the first thing I've done is copy the contents of my SD cards over to the desktop. And as you can see, I've got SD1 on the left and SD2 on the right. The first thing you're gonna see is a folder titled X underscore live. Just open that up. And every time you hit the record button, a new session is going to start with a new number um, I don't know exactly what these numbers mean or how to interpret them, but from what I've found, I've been able to guess is pretty much the higher number or the farther down the alphabet or whichever way you go has to do with when the session was created. And uh, these are created in separate sessions. I'm going to open up one of these folders here to kind of show you. So first thing you're going to see is a log file, which you don't really have to worry about. And then you're going to see a number of WAV files, depending on how many had to be made for whichever recording session, basically from when you hit record to when you hit stop. This thing is making continuous multi-channel wave files that then transfer immediately over. And the files themselves are seamless, even though they're all separated and stuff. And I'll get to that in a second. So this first session here, I wanted to say was probably about 45 minutes. But if we go back up to the parent folder and we see another session here, 5.4 CD, so on and so forth here, uh, we're going to say it's 8494 and 7B39. Again, I have no idea what that means, but I know this is the later session. This session here is a little different because there are two SD card slots on the back of the M32. And once you fill up one card, the system automatically starts writing to the second card in the same recording session, but it creates a new folder and a new set of files. And you have to be careful as to which card you're using and it can get complicated. But these two folders, I don't know why they have similar file names, but they're not exactly the same. They do correspond to the same session. If we open up this one, you've only got two WAV files in there because that was the rest of that uh, second 45 minute session. If you actually line these up, they will seamlessly play from one to the other, but you have to meticulously attach them to the end. And there's ways of doing that in uh, what I'm going to be using, which is Studio One. Okay, so here we are in Studio One, and I'm going to start a session to show you how to import those separate multi-channel files to be usable as separate tracks. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make a new song. And if you didn't know already, these files are recorded in 32-bit float. They're not 24-bit or 16-bit. The recording to the SD card is 32-bit floating point WAV files, 32 channels, all in a single file. It's really, interesting to say the least. So there's a couple of specs that we want to make sure that are matched properly before we import these files. The sample rate of the board when we recorded was 48 kilohertz, so match that. The resolution of the files themselves are 32-bit float, so match that. Um, I tend to do my uh, longer sessions in seconds. This is a live show that was recorded straight on the board. Um, I'm gonna keep the song length at about an hour. Make sure at least those uh, points are hit and matched so that you know what you're working with, you know, keep in mind how long the session is and uh, all that, and then we'll get to it. So let's start. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our files here and head on into the desktop, which is where I've got these folders at. And here we go. We've got SD1 right here and the XLive folder that we saw before. We're gonna open up the first folder and there's our five WAV files. That log file is, you don't need it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is that even though this is a singular wave file, this actually has the information for all 32 channels in that file. I'm going to show you by just dumping it right onto the window here and give it a second to build preview while I open this up. And you can see 
you might be able to see, um, I'm checking on the monitor here, you might be able to see a couple of dark lines and stuff uh, over in this section. Oh, see, there we go. So if you take a look here, you can actually see that wave files are existent inside of the session. As a matter of fact, I'm going to drag this open to magnify it. You can see them there. Um, and it's playable. However, the problem is that these are not separate tracks, and there's no way to separate the tracks from this file here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to undo it, Control Z, right? And I'm going to go over here to the all the zeros one dot wave, and I am going to split to mono file. So in order to do that, you go over here, you right click, and I'm going to split to mono files here. I'm going to go ahead and give that a minute, maybe even two maybe even longer. Oh, you're not seeing that pop-up file. Riveting content. Here, so you can see what I'm seeing. It's like watching paint dry. All right, and we're back. So this took some time to actually take the files. It took every single one of the tracks and it split them into 32 separate different WAV files. And each of these are the tracks that I recorded, regardless of whether or not there was an input in them. So when we drag this in, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's all 32 tracks right here. Pop them in, let the preview do its thing. There we are. Now, uh, from here, it's always best to have track notes. I actually ended up having to do like all of this from memory. So I heavily recommend uh, when you do something like this, take notes. Uh, it was something I definitely had a problem with later. <laughs> so each of these tracks are separate and I can't necessarily play these because I don't own the copyright to the music. So take my word for it here. But the next thing uh, that we want to do is we are going to convert the second file. Do the same thing, right click it, split to mono files, and each of these tracks will correspond to the previous file. While we are uh, waiting here, I'll show you what uh, how much time this is taking. So essentially what's happening here is while the files are converting, each of these tracks are the same tracks as what they were before. So there's no mix and match. What that means is the next file is still those same tracks. They just literally copy over. And the way that Behringer wrote the program is they set it up. I don't know why for uh, lower capacity SD cards, they max out at 32 gigabyte storage. Like you could throw an SDXD in there at 128 gigs, but I'm not positive it would work. You basically have a maximum amount, amount of time between two SD cards to record just under three total hours worth of continuous time. The time will be split between different WAV files. And the reason why they did a singular file, they were realizing that you could write 32 tracks worth of WAV information to a single file faster than writing to 32 simultaneous tracks. They also were doing this to make it, you know, kind of on the more affordable side of the market. And so there was a little bit of compromise when it came down to storage space uh, capability and that kind of stuff. However, that being said, 32 gig cards are really cheap. I recommend getting the good ones. I recommend SanDisk personally, like uh, I use the SanDisk Ultras. Okay, now we have our files and basically the same idea, number 02.01 to 02.32. It's the same tracks one through 32 that go here. One of the things that you want to be able to do is these wave files just kind of, if I zoom in here real quick, these wave files, and I'm gonna zoom in here to kind of give you a good idea. These wave files literally are recording information right into the next file. Um, and in order to make sure that they are fully seamless, you go up here to the snap menu. You can do adaptive snap bar and quantizing, which is quantizing to the grid. You're gonna to wanna to snap to an event or snap to an event end. So I'm going to turn on snap to event end. By the way, if you have both snap to grid and snap event grid, when you throw the file up, it's going to snap either to what you have designated as the grid, or it's going to snap to an event end and it may take priority of one over the other. So in order to make sure that these seamless files are attached together properly, you need to remove snap to grid as an option. Snap to events will be checked and snap event end must be checked. Since we have that checked, we now can pull this file in and it's going to not snap to anything until it snaps to pop the end right there. And from there, as we continue to build preview, you're going to see that these files now are retaining their proper information. Now, 
this is a continuous file. This is how you snap two of those events. When you're working between multiple SD cards, like with the second session here and the third session here, you're going to take 01 and snap it to the end of 03. You have to keep that in mind. Make sure that you know which folder is which, kind of, it tends to be time-based as the numbers or the letters or what the code is continues to increase. So when you're attaching the end of a first card session to a second card session, the next folder is the beginning of that next session. And uh, that's pretty much it when you want to work with these files. Take the files, bring them in here, and you have to separate them and then drag them in and make sure that adaptive snap is sent specifically to event end so that you are able to import your files properly. All right, thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and uh, ring the bell icon for more videos like this. Also, leave me a comment and let me know if this helped you out. And for those who don't have Studio One and know how to split these files up for editing, leave your process in the comments as well to help other folks looking to do the same. Thanks again, and this is Mike from Ruling Note Music reminding you to never compromise your sound.